Today we're going to make some biscuits. They're good with your eggs, <laughs> since that's all I've showed you how to cook so far. So, you don't need many things. You shouldn't even have to go shopping. You need a whole stick of butter. You need some baking powder. You need some salt, a cup of milk, some flour, and some sugar. And as far as utensils go, you need a pan that goes in the oven, you need a cutting board, you need a wooden spoon, a biscuit cutter, and if you don't have one, you could use a glass, you could use a, a clean cat food can, anything that's round that will cut through a very soft dough, and a couple of measuring cups and measuring spoons. You need something with a straight edge because when you bake, it's important that your things, that your ingredients are measured precisely because there's actually some chemical reactions going on. So the first thing we're going to do is measure three cups of flour. When you measure flour, you want to take your straight edge and clean the top right off so your flour is in there. We're going to have a quarter cup of sugar. Same thing. Clean it off. Add just a quarter cup. Now, here's the recipe right here. If you want to take a regander at that, I'm just going to add the rest of the ingredients pretty quickly. I'm putting in two tablespoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and your butter, by the way, should be cold. This came right out of the refrigerator. The, you never want to use a nice, warm, soft butter when you're making a dough because imagine crumbling butter or stirring butter or working butter, however you want to say it, into flour. You will end up with just a paste. So you want it cold. And while I don't recommend that you use your hands for a lot of other things, making a dough is one place where I always use my hands. They make tools for this. Some people use a pastry cutter, which is a handle with four wires on it. Some people use a knife and a fork. But I like to use my hands. And can you see what I'm doing in here? I'm just squeezing the butter and the flour all together. Just pushing it with my thumbs and my fingers. What you're trying to do is get every tiny, tiny little piece of your butter surrounded by flour. And you can see it'll stick together but it easily crumbles apart too. It looks, I think, a little bit like hmm, Parmesan cheese. Don't you think? Okay, when you've got it all mixed in like that so you don't have any big lumps showing, you add your cup of milk. You stir it up good. You're going to want to turn it out onto your cutting board. Now so that it doesn't stick, you'll want to put a little more flour on your cutting board. Turn your dough out and you want to knead it just a few times. You don't want to overwork it. Now to knead it, get it all into a ball. Fold it towards you and push. And then turn it, fold it towards you and push. Turn it, fold it towards you and push. Turn it and you just keep doing that. If it starts to stick a little bit, you just lift it off. Sprinkle a little more flour and keep going. But like I said, you don't want to do it too many times maybe 12, 15 times. Has anybody been counting? No, oh, there's nobody here. I guess I should have been counting. Well, that 
is probably enough. Now you'll see, I don't have a rolling pin here. And if you had one, you could certainly use it. And I do have one. But, in the, I'm missing a word. Ah. Well, so as to not have to use a lot of utensils and have a lot more to clean up. Just press it out to about, oh, I don't know, a half inch thick. Take your trusty cutter and go straight down. Straight down. Straight down. Put these on your ungreased pan. And when you've done all the dough, you want to get them in the oven. And 15 minutes later, you pull out some lovely biscuits. We've got some chicken stew on the table to go on our biscuits. But they're good with anything. They're good all by themselves. Happy biscuit making.